Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review for the AutoVox dash cam and backup camera kit. You'll receive the rearview mirror camera, instruction manual, microfiber cleaning cloth, cigarette lighter power adapter with 11 foot cord, two sets of mirror attachment bands, one normal and one extra strength, a backup camera with license plate mount, and 30 foot rear video input cable. Note that a micro SD card is required for operation, but not included. I'll go over a few specs first and then I'll show you how I installed this in my car. The mirror is pretty big, it measures 12 inches by 3 inches, and the LCD screen on the left hand side has 4 and 3 8 inch diagonal. Be sure to read the warnings on the protective film before removing it. The mirror is slightly darker than normal, and it has a silver tint to it. This helps a little bit with glare at night. The camera for the unit is on the reverse side of the mirror. There is an external speaker on the left hand side and a reset button right here under the ports. These clips are for the rubber attachment bands, and the unit will wrap around your existing rearview mirror. On top are the mini USB power port, input port for the backup camera, micro SD card slot, and microphone. On the bottom in the middle is the power switch. The lens on the camera sits on a ball joint, and it's adjustable to point in different directions. This will help you orient the camera after you've adjusted your rearview mirror. To install the camera, place the mirror unit over your existing rearview mirror, and strap on the two rubber latches. Plug the mini USB cable into the power port on the top, and the other end into a cigarette lighter port. Next, install the back camera on the license plate by removing the two top screws. Then insert the bracket behind the license plate and line up the holes before replacing the screws. The distance between the holes is 7 inches on center. Feed the output cable from the reverse camera into the trunk and then attach it to the input cable that will plug into the mirror unit. Because both of the connectors are angled, it's kind of a tight fit, and it would have been better if the micro USB cable was a straight connector. Now that the rear camera is hooked up, I want it to come on automatically when the car is put in reverse gear. For this, we'll have to connect the black and red wires on the reverse camera's cable into the car's reverse light. This is the connector for my reverse light. The blue and black cables indicate positive and negative respectively, and should match up with the red and black cables from the reverse camera. You can splice the wires into the electrical line, or what I've done is simply push the corresponding cable down into the connector where it makes contact with the wiring inside. Then just plug the connector back in. Now we're ready to see the camera in action. Because my outlets are off when the car is off, when I start the car, the camera comes on automatically. The first time the camera powers on with a new SD card in it, it will ask you to format the card. Since it's a touchscreen, you can just tap yes. When I put the car in reverse, it automatically switches to the back camera, and it puts up the reverse guidelines, which can be used to help you parallel park. If you don't want the rear guidelines to come up, there's a loop of green wire on the input cable that you can cut. However, this is a one-way process unless you reattach the wire later. There are a few options on the video record menu when the screen is on. You can lock the current video, mute or unmute the microphone, or exit to the menu, which will stop the recording. The large icon on the left goes back to record mode. This is photo mode. You can activate motion detection for when your car is parked, go into the settings, format the SD card, activate the mic, and playback recorded video. Note that the M6 only records footage from the front facing camera, and although you can view the rear camera when driving and reversing, it does not save any of that footage, and there is no option or upgrade to turn that feature on. There are three video resolution modes, 2304 by 1296, 920 by 1080, and 1280 by 720, which are all HD at 30 frames per second. At the highest resolution, a 5 minute clip takes up 600 megabytes. You'll get more recording time if you use lesser resolutions, but I prefer to keep mine at the max. In general, the video is clear and detailed, with natural looking colors, good saturation, and decent white balance. The sound isn't great, and it's sort of muffled with plenty of road noise, but it's clear enough to make out conversation if there's not loud radio blasting. The rear camera resolution isn't as good as the front camera, and you can switch to it by clicking the power button, but you can really only use it for backing up anyway since none of the footage gets saved. At night, of course everything is darker, but it's still pretty clear. You don't exactly get night vision, but lights are bright and you can still see a lot. You can even read the license plate of the car in front of you. The backup camera performance at night was awesome, and it pretty much looked like daytime footage, which is really impressive. 
With the LCD off, the mirror looks just like a normal rear view mirror. It works fine for that purpose, except because it's slightly longer, your sun visor might hit the mirror when you open it. The only drawback to having a touchscreen in the mirror is that you get a lot of fingerprints on your mirror. As for the dash cam, there's a few other standard features like a G sensor, parking mode, and motion detection. Overall, the video quality is quite good for a budget dash camera, and the audio, while not great, is acceptable. It's simple to use, and it was quick to install. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and join me next time.